Welcome to part two of my Proxmox tutorial series. In my previous video, we went over installing Proxmox and all the ins and outs of configuring your first virtual machine. Today, we're gonna jump into PCI Express pass-through or how to allow virtual machines to directly interact with hardware you have in your server. This can be storage controllers, graphics cards, network cards, or any other device connected over PCI Express. Let's get started. Today's video is brought to you by me and the all-new craftcomputing.store. There's no better way to help support the channel than by picking up a set of coasters, whiskey stones, rocks glasses, or any of the other accessories we have to help set up your own home bar. And it's all designed 100% in-house. Visit craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like I mentioned, today we're going to cover device pass-through in Proxmox 8.0. We'll go over what hardware is required, how to enable it, what types of devices you can pass through, and a couple of use case examples. To start off, what is device pass-through? Essentially, it's taking physical hardware attached to your server and allowing a virtual machine access to it directly. And I think we'll start with some use cases, as you might be wondering why you'd want to do something like this. As we covered in the first video, a virtual machine is a combination of real and emulated hardware, allowing a host to run multiple types of virtual PCs with different hardware configurations, operating systems, and the like. But most virtual machines at their basic level rely on emulated I.O. devices. This means things like your CPU and memory are directly accessed by the VM, but devices like your storage controller, network adapter, graphics card, even USB devices like keyboard and mice are all emulated. While it's sometimes possible to configure all available resources directly on your host hardware and then emulate hardware access for guest systems to be able to use them, there are some situations where giving direct physical access to real hardware is a far better option. As a quick refresher, the server we're going to be working with is my $1,000 8-bay DIY server, powered by an Erying 11900H motherboard and CPU combo with 8 cores and 16 threads, along with 32 gigabytes of DDR4. For storage, we've got a pair of 1TB NVMe drives, which are responsible for Proxmox, as well as our virtual machine disks. On the front here, we've also got 8 6TB hard drives connected to an AS Media 1064 PCI Express SATA controller. And here's where our first use case comes into play, as how would we go about giving a virtual machine access to all 8 of these hard drives? Sure, it is just Linux that we're running on after all, so inside Proxmox we could set up an NFS or an iSCSI share via a terminal, then configure the virtual machine to automatically connect to those drives at boot. But then we're running all of our storage over network protocols rather than having direct access to them. That adds needless complexity and actually limits the speed of the overall setup. Instead, we can give a virtual machine direct physical control over the PCI Express storage controller, which basically is like plugging in the PCI Express card directly into the virtual machine. Because the storage controller is passed through, the virtual machine will have direct bare metal access to each hard drive over the PCI Express bus. This kind of access is vital for systems like TrueNAS, which runs the ZFS file system and needs physical access to hard drives for it to work properly. Other instances of PCI Express pass-through being needed are for virtualized gaming, where you want to pass through a graphics card to a Windows virtual machine. The same goes for media servers like Plex or Jellyfin, where a graphics card might be used for video encoding. Network cards can be passed through for dedicated and isolated access, such as a PFSense server running as a virtual machine. Anywhere a PC requires or would benefit from direct access to hardware, pass-through makes it all possible. There are also some instances where hardware can be shared between a host and multiple virtual machines. While I've shown this off in my cloud gaming series of videos, we're not going to get into any proprietary configurations like NVIDIA vGPU or Intel's SRIOV for their sharing of their integrated graphics card today. PCI Express pass-through requires CPU and motherboard support for it to work. Now, while almost every modern CPU supports this feature, motherboard support, especially with consumer boards, can be a bit hit or miss. It also doesn't help that PCI Express pass-through has about a dozen different names, and each OEM and vendor use those names interchangeably. The basic technology at play here is called IOMMU, or Input Output Memory Management Unit. It's a fantastically catchy name, I know. It's a CPU function that essentially allows a virtual machine direct access to specific memory address spaces. 
This is gonna get a little complicated, so I'm gonna simplify it as much as I can. But traditionally, a virtual machine is presented with a virtual memory address space, which basically means there's no way for a virtual machine to access specific memory addresses that are required to interact with hardware directly. IOMMU allows a CPU to pass through memory address locations directly to a virtual machine, and a VM with access to real memory address locations can utilize anything in that space. That means bare metal access to hardware, so long as the CPU has granted access to that particular space. As I mentioned, each OEM and vendor call the technology something unique and different to them. AMD refers to it as AMD VI. Intel calls it Virtualization Technology for Directed I.O., or Intel VTD. Motherboard OEMs can also use their own naming conventions as well. Both AMD and Intel also have a branch technology called Single Root I.O. Virtualization, or SRIOV. Sometimes you'll see options for both IOMMU and SRIOV in your motherboard BIOS. Sometimes just one or the other will enable both features. But in short, you'll want to make sure that IOMMU and or SRIOV is enabled in your motherboard's BIOS. It can be called by dozens of different names, but the root technology at play here is called IOMMU, which should give you a good term to start Googling if you can't find the answer in your particular product's manual. On the Earying motherboard that we're using today, the option for IOMMU was located under Chipset System Agent VTD. Again, your particular motherboard is going to be different. Make sure you have IOMMU enabled and we can finally get into Proxmox. Unfortunately, inside Proxmox, there is no GUI option for enabling IOMMU support. There are two different methods for enabling IOMMU depending on if your system is booting via legacy BIOS or via EFI. For this video, I'm going to assume that Proxmox is booting via EFI, but my written documentation covers both methods. Click the link in the description for that file. To start off, you'll want to SSH into your Proxmox server or open up the shell window from the web GUI. Once you have a terminal open, you'll want to type in nano slash etc slash kernel slash command line. This file configures kernel parameters for Proxmox, and in my case defines the ZFS pool used for storage by the OS as well as booting Proxmox itself. This file loads parameters on a single line, so any changes we make will need to be appended at the end of line 1. Since my server is running an Intel CPU, we're going to add Intel underscore IOMMU equals on at the end of this line. For AMD-based systems, you'll want to enter AMD underscore IOMMU equals on. With that done, press Control X to exit, Y to save the file, and enter to confirm the file name. Along with IOMMU, we'll need to load some additional kernel modules into Proxmox to support hardware pass-through. Go ahead and type in nano slash etc slash modules. In this file, you'll want to copy and paste the four modules listed in the VFIO section of my written instructions. Those are VFIO, IOMMU type, PCI, and VIRQFD. Once again, go ahead and press Control X to exit, Y to save, and then enter to confirm the file name. To apply these changes, there are two commands you need to know. First, for the kernel parameters, type in proxmox-boot-tool refresh, and then press enter. For the kernel modules file, type in update initramfs-u-k-ul. Once both file commands are finished, go ahead and reboot your system, hopefully now with IOMMU support. Once you have IOMMU up and running, many devices can be passed through with no additional configuration. Things like storage controllers, network cards, and the like can be used by a virtual machine without any other settings required. Graphics cards often require a bit more special sauce to make work, and we'll cover that later in the video. To start off, we're going to pass through my AS Media 1064 storage controller, which will give a virtual machine direct access to not only the storage controller itself, but every hard drive that's attached to it. Passing through a device like this is basically like unplugging it from the Proxmox server and connecting it directly to a virtual machine. Proxmox will no longer be able to use the hardware directly with the VM having complete control. For creating a TrueNAS virtual machine, passing through the storage controller is the best way to handle it, as ZFS requires bare metal access to the disks in a pool. And for those who are about to say you shouldn't virtualize TrueNAS, that advice is more than a decade outdated, long before direct access memory virtualization and hardware pass-through became commonplace in server hardware. So please, stop repeating it. To get started, I'm going to create a very quick virtual machine for TrueNAS Core, with the current version being 13.0-U5.3. Since we intend to pass through a device, you'll want to make sure the machine type matches your host type, that is, legacy versus UEFI. 
I covered this in my previous video about the system tab if you need a quick refresher. Again, my system is an EFI based system, so we'll use a Q35 machine type with an OVMF BIOS. For CPU, I'm going to allocate four cores and then leave the CPU type at the default. For memory, we're going to allocate 16 gigabytes of RAM, but since we're passing through hardware, there's an extra consideration here. Since hardware pass-through is entirely memory address based, you'll need to disable memory ballooning for it to work. The two technologies just aren't able to work together, as memory address locations need to be hard-coded for hardware access, and ballooning makes addresses dynamic inside of virtual memory. With the virtual machine created, I'm actually going to boot it up and install TrueNAS before passing through my storage controller. No particular reason for this, it's just the order that I prefer to do this operation in. Once you have TrueNAS installed on the virtual machine, I'm going to shut down the VM and head back to the Proxmox web GUI. Click on the TrueNAS VM, go to the Hardware tab, and then click on Add PCI Device. There are two main sections of this window, one for mapped devices, that means devices that have shareable resources like certain video cards and network cards, and raw devices, which means a PCI Express device as a whole. Click on the raw devices bubble, and then in the pull down menu, find your storage controller. Again, I'm using an AS Media controller, which is PCI device 05.00 in this system. Once you've selected your device to pass through, go ahead and click on Add. To verify this is all working, I'm going to open the TrueNAS web GUI. Once I've logged in, I can click on the Storage tab and then on Disks. And if the gods are smiling on me, there should be eight 6 terabyte drives visible. Another surefire way to tell this is working is open a shell and type in LSPCI to list all PCI devices present. Sure enough, down near the bottom is the AS Media 1064 controller. With that, the TrueNAS VM has 100% control and direct bare metal access to the drive controller and all of the attached hard disks, meaning TrueNAS and ZFS have everything they need to work perfectly inside this virtual machine. With that all up and running, let's go ahead and switch gears and talk about graphics cards, specifically passing through a graphics card as a whole, because this can add a little wrinkle to the equation. As graphics devices can be used by even the Linux shell, they often have kernel modules loaded and active, which prevent a virtual machine from taking control. While I've covered in great depth partitioning your NVIDIA graphics card inside of Proxmox, today we're only going to focus on single device pass-through. And these same instructions can work for NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel Arc-based GPUs. For today's example, I'm going to be passing through an NVIDIA Quadro P1000 to an Ubuntu VM, a very common setup for media servers like Plex or Jellyfin for media encoding. For starters, you cannot pass through your primary display source, that is the video source you're using with your Proxmox server. In my case, the Intel 11900H has integrated graphics, so I need to set the integrated GPU as the primary video source, not the NVIDIA graphics card. Once you have that configured, as well as your graphics card installed, go ahead and boot up into Proxmox, and we can make sure it's configured properly to be passed through to a VM. Open up the shell and type in LSPCI to list all PCI devices on your system. Locate the graphics card you want to pass through, in my case, again, the NVIDIA Quadro P1000, listed as device 01 00. We're going to need a couple pieces of information for the next steps, starting with the exact PCI ID of the graphics card to disable its features on the host. This is a hexadecimal value and is often unique to specific models of graphics cards. Our GPU is on PCI slot 0100, so enter the command lspci-n-s followed by the device ID-v. This will display in detail everything Proxmox knows about this device. Starting at the top, you can find the hexadecimal identification for the card. In my case, it's 10DE1CB1. Also, take note of the kernel modules that are in use here. In this case, there's an NVIDIA FB along with Nuvo, and we'll deal with those momentarily. Now, do keep in mind, if you had, for example, two identical graphics cards, in this case, two Quadro P1000s, and you wanted the host to use one of the cards and a virtual machine to use the other via pass-through, that's actually not possible, as you need to disable video from outputting from all matching PCI IDs. It's one of the only gotchas with this method and shouldn't be an issue for most people, but it is something to keep in mind. To prevent cards from displaying any display output in Proxmox, we need to add the hex ID of the card to ModProbe with a flag Disable VGA. That can be done by copying and pasting the line here, and replacing the pound signs with your card's hex ID. 
To finish up, we also need to make sure there are no active kernel modules trying to use the card for anything on the host system. My P1000 is using Nuvo right now, which is an open source community replacement of the NVIDIA driver built into the Linux kernel, as well as NVIDIA FB. Adding both Nuvo and NVIDIA to ModProbe with the blacklist flag should prevent them from loading and free up our GPU to enable pass-through. Once you've entered in all of these lines of text, you'll want to update INIT RAMFS again and then reboot to apply your changes. Once Proxmox is back up, you can verify everything is working as expected by again typing in lspci-n-s followed by your device ID-v to see your graphics card, but now it should say VFIO PCI under active kernel modules. If this is what you see, you should be able to pass through your GPU. Just like before, click on the virtual machine you'd like to add the card to, go down to the hardware tab and click add PCI device. In this case, we're going to select the NVIDIA P1000, but once you have it selected, make sure you check the All Functions box under the device pulldown. Graphics cards often have multiple unique devices on them in addition to the graphics processor itself. Attached sub-devices like the NVIDIA audio controller or the USB-C controller need to be passed through as well to avoid conflicts with the host system. Now, unfortunately, there's a bit of bad news to all this. You may have done everything correctly in this section. You can spend hours troubleshooting, double checking, going line by line, character by character over your blacklist, VFIO, and command line files, only for everything to be 100% correct. And this still might not work for you. On my Erying motherboard, while I am able to pass through the AS Media 1064 card in the X1 slot on this motherboard, and even some X4 and X8 PCI Express cards in the top slot, the Quadro P1000, or any other graphics card that I plugged in, simply will not work for me. Seriously, I tried a P1000, I tried my P400, my P620, I tried an M2000, I even went as far as to installing a Radeon Pro WX2100, which is an X4 graphics card, still with absolutely no success. GPU pass-through has so many possible ways it can fail, and as I mentioned, each motherboard can implement features in different ways. This can be their arrangement of PCI Express lanes, grouping of devices and ports, or any one of a thousand hardware combinations that can cause the system to just not work as expected. For this PCI Express pass-through solution in Proxmox 8.0, it works on three out of the four PCs that I've tried it on, with the one failure being this Erying motherboard. But I've also read some forum posts of others getting this exact same board working with GPU pass-through. It might be that I'm utilizing both NVMe slots for storage and that's causing it to fail. But at the end of the day, it fails all the same. For my use case, it's not a huge deal as I had not planned on running a graphics card in here. Instead, I planned on running a 10 gig network card in that slot long-term. An upgrade I'll likely do as soon as this tutorial video is done. PCI Express pass-through through IOMMU can transform a useful server into an essential one, bringing more functionality and power to virtual machines through the use of real hardware. Rather than running a virtual machine host on one system and a NAS server full of drives on another, we've now got the functionality of both in this tiny little desktop unit, with TrueNAS accessing all the drives directly inside of a virtual machine and Proxmox able to manage all the virtual machines themselves. Now, one question I get asked in every single video about either Proxmox or TrueNAS are trying to use one or the other as a magic bullet, a be-all, end-all solution for all of your server needs. And that is, if I install TrueNAS on a virtual machine, I'll get the, why did you even bother installing Proxmox? Can't you just run all your virtual machines with TrueNAS? Or conversely, why did you bother installing TrueNAS in a VM? Can't you just run a file server off Proxmox since it's just Linux and already has ZFS on it? They are both great operating systems, but my answer for why haven't I just chosen a camp and stuck with it instead of installing both is pretty simple. Proxmox is built from the ground up to be a hypervisor. It doesn't have any GUI or features built around ZFS pool creation, file system management, user management, permission allocation, sync tasks, backups, or anything else that I'd use a file server for. It is just Linux and it does have ZFS, but it's not the right tool for the job unless you like managing your file server entirely by hand through the terminal. Likewise, while TrueNAS does have some virtualization features and they're getting better with every single release, that's not the main focus of TrueNAS either. It doesn't have multi-server management for easy migrations, fine-tuned resource allocation, virtual switch management, or anything else that I'd use a virtual machine host for. 
TrueNAS is a great file server, but it's just not robust enough to be a one-stop shop for all of your server and file storage needs. Besides, running a home lab is so we can experiment and learn, and part of the fun of running multiple complex systems like this is making everything work for you. Hopefully, after watching this video, even with a minor failure of my hardware, you'll have everything you need to pass through PCI devices to virtual machines inside Proxmox. If you want to know more about my specific setup, or think you might have a solution to why my GPU passer is failing on the Erying 11900H ES motherboard, I'll post my DMESG and error messages down in the video description. They'll be right below the links to written documentation to follow for this video. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. As always, if you're interested in any of the hardware that I used in the server, I will have all the links down in the video description, as well as where you can find the awesome glassware that I use in this video available on craftcomputing.store. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Here for today is a West Coast classic. It is Sierra Nevada out of Chico, California. It is the Atomic Torpedo Imperial IPA at 9.2%. Now Sierra Nevada has a number of different torpedo variants. This is the Imperial. It is the heavy hitter. It is the, you want a West Coast IPA? We'll give you a West Coast IPA. I love the Torpedo series of IPAs. They, they're West Coast, but instead of being the, the very dry hop forward form of an IPA, they're a little bit more wet. They're, they've got a little bit more body to them. And especially the Imperial IPA, it kind of leans on uh, some more lager and pilsner roots rather than trying to be you know, this massive hot bomb. Uh, it actually reminds me a lot of like sourdough French bread. Uh, like it's got that kind of, of complexity to it. Uh, it's just good. It's just a good, fantastic, classic example of a West Coast IPA. Cheers.